Hi, this is Sheldon Picotti, speaking on behalf of the team at New Life Interactive. The purpose of this video is to introduce some of the novel game mechanics in our first title, Cell Emergence. Um, so without further ado, I'll give you a little bit of motion here. You can see um, moving up toward the membrane right here are germs. Um, beneath them and not quite sprouting it are shoots of what we call growth, which can also be thought of as cancer, though it's not quite scan cancer because we're at a smaller scale. Right here is the player. You're a nanite uh, in this microscopic world with abilities to uh, attack things and construct things. And the first thing I'm going to show is constructing bucky fiber pathways from this um, T cell here. The blue sparkly thing is a T cell. And it creates antibodies. And you can route them to parts of the membrane to defend the membrane. So I need to pause now because the action moves pretty fast. So you can see that the blue antibody particles are moving through these pathways that I drew. And over time they will percolate through these membranes. And this is basically an RTS mechanic where you're, you're building units, um, building up forces to attack at some later time or defend at some later time. Um, hopefully you know, it pays off. Uh, but it's a very fast paced game. You can't do that for very long. You gotta get your, make your move and then begin defending the membranes. You see I'm using a special weapon here that shoots the germs. This is kind of a missile command mechanic where you can where you have to sort of time your shots. Um, but of course missile command is not quite enough to uh, engage a player these days. I don't think so. We have several things going on. With the uh, purple growth, let me pause for a second, you can see that it, it grows pixel by pixel. These interactions are all um, cellular automata based or voxel by voxel based. So based on rules, uh, the um, growth will move through the membrane uh, one box at a time. Just as the antibodies here, these translucent boxes, are percolating through the membra membrane via diffusion. So you have these really low level organic um, interactions which are, you know, permeated through the world. The whole world is basically alive in that sense, uh, containing game state, containing interactivity. Uh, but you need to interact with it on a more macro scale so that the weapons, uh, by, by necessity, need to be a little bit bigger scale. Uh, so the player's main weapon is a pretty simple laser-like projectile, somewhat reminiscent of Defender, but it has uh, different effects on the world depending on what it hits. So you can see here, you can shoot the purple growth with it. It, it deploys a uh, type of element into the cellular automata simulation that interacts uh, voxel by voxel and will eat up whatever's around it and we call that corrosive colloid but if you shoot the membrane you'll see that the membrane glows and this is what we call prion gel it'll coat the membrane and spread the antibodies through it so you can expand your defenses uh, if you shoot the um, bucky fibers and fortunately as a perfect example you can sever them and then protect the uh, one of your pathways from an infected pathway over here. So th there are many other interactions throughout the game with different substances uh, for this particular weapon, uh, but those are just a few examples. The uh, pathways that the player can draw are actually useful in many different ways. You can build barriers with them uh, as well as pathways, uh, and, but they also can be charged up with other elements in the environment so that um, you can use them as kind of a smart bomb weapon in, some of, in the later levels to clear out a big part of the level. So again, one tool, multiple uses. Uh, so here you see where an antibody has struck the purple growth and triggered a, an immune response that has destroyed a huge amount of it. Uh, this is basically uh, that moment in an RTS where the player no longer is just min-maxing uh, a low-level simulation, but they achieve some big event, like they take a city or they, they found a city, and destroy an army, that kind of thing. So um, a necessary mechanic on uh, such a you know, deep uh, simulation in order to keep it dramatic and eventful. We started describing this game as massively reactive because every particle of the world has some kind of identity, some kind of state, and you know, in fact every color has some meaning that none of the things trying to dress itself up is more than it is. Um, but really the entire world is uh, 
completely alive and, and fluid. And you know, whether or not that term massively reactive sticks, I, I do think this is a harbinger of things to come in the sense that um, graphics have got to the point where they're almost photoreal and, and once we have enough computer power uh, for that, I think it will need to be used for something else. I think that's the next frontier is in creating novel types of game interactions based on fluids, fire, smoke, uh, self-replicating blob, aliens. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential mechanics that could be worked into normal uh, genres of games like shooters. You know, imagine a blob coming down a hallway at you or something. And I think understanding how to leverage this kind of interaction in, in a way that's predictable and, and fun is, is worth knowing. So that's the, the, the motivation behind this project. Um, I think it'd be pretty grandiose to, to call this game a, a new genre of game. It's uh, certainly an extreme case of trying to make a game out of uh, a simulation. And it was an interesting exercise uh, for me to do this in a purely abstract space and see what kind of decisions had to be made. And just a quick example is uh, this simple weapon the player shoots. Uh, if you let these yellow pixels really fight a random battle uh, like you would in a game like Risk or something, uh, it's not any fun because you never uh, are sure of clearing out a certain area and there's always some kind of disease left. Um, so I had to make them invincible for about 12 generations and then you have an area where you're pretty confident you've cleared it out. Um, so, overall, I think it was, it's was it been an interesting exercise, uh, a lot of stuff happening, a world that's fully alive and uh, full of danger and pretty uh, stressful, and I think I'm about to have the patient die on me here, uh, but I hope all of you enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed making it. Thank you.